So after months and months of delays due to whatever's going on at DC, if I had to guess, I say Hero in Crisis really effed up the entire Doomsday Clock storyline because of the Wally West character direction, which I have now been hearing rumors that he may survive the story, but be forced to join Suicide Squad for his heinous crimes. Anyways, um... Like, uh, like I said, they could probably salvage it if they tie it in that Dr. Manhattan did it. He could have... Wally could scream out that Dr. Manhattan did it. Okay, so... And, and people would just think he's crazy, but then they start to realize, okay, maybe this is connected, and considering what happened to Wally West, okay, maybe there is something to this. But, yeah. Uh... Yeah. And... Issue 9 basically is the... The big... Big part of the finale, like... Basically, everything's starting to kick into full gear in the ninth issue because, like Watchmen, Doomsday Clock is incredibly slow if it's pacing because of its style of storytelling because it's working with 12 issues and it's not a Crisis on Infinite Earth style event. It's a Watchmen-esque event. So, the two cover ver covers vary. One cover shows the Legion of Superheroes ring with blood on it floating through space over the surface of Mars. And another one shows Dr. Manhattan thousing everybody to death. Yeah, I know where this is going. And we see a variety of heroes. Zatanna, Barry Allen, um, Aquaman, Green Lantern, uh, Red Robin, what looks to be a red, red hero that's not clearly Wally West, uh, Superman and Batman, and Wonder Woman. Yikes. So, yeah. Uh, oh, and Shazam. And then we finally open up with this massive event where Dr. Manhattan is once again contemplating the future of the world and how he's perceiving time. It's December 27th, 3019. A boy sacrifices his life to save Earth's son. Although his body is destroyed, his ring survives. The explosion sends the ring carrying back through time like a tachyon particle. It's December 20th, 3019. The boy is alive. He sweats under his iron mask, auditioning to join a legion of others dedicated to uniting the universe. The, bo the dead boy's ring is in my hands. Then Dr. Manhattan travels back through time in his perceptions, saying, It's July 16th, 1940. I moved the lantern six inches out of Alan Scott's reach. There is no ring in my hand. There never was a ring. And now uh, we just got a big hint of what just happened. So not only is Dr. Manhattan content to murdering Alan Scott for whatever social experiment reason uh, that he was told by Dan DiDio, uh, he decides to basically kill the Legion of Superheroes, basically. Because now with the Legion of Superheroes dead, that me with Alan Scott dead, that means that there is a Justice League, but because there's no Justice Society, there's no Legion of Superheroes. Which leads me to think that there's going to be an event that happens in the, in the, which, okay, let's think of the Dr. Manhattan viewpoint he's thinking. So clearly something happened to the Justice League or this Metahuman's arms race did it that leads to the Legion never forming because they don't want to make the same mistakes the Justice League did and the founders that would find that organization don't want to form because of the concern the Justice League had. And since there's no Justice Society that served as, his, as the Justice League's foundation, there's nothing to build upon. So, yeah, Dr. Manhattan then continues saying that there's nothing but darkness from 3019, 3002, 2984, 2040, 30, 2192, and 2030. All he gets is nothing. The only vision he sees is that one week from now, the last thing he'll see is Superman in a rage. His cape is torn and his hands stained with blood. The blood of your broken bodies! I stand on Mars, unable to answer, but does it? But a single question. Does Superman destroy me? Or do I destroy everything? And thus, as we are as he is musing over these thoughts and his intellectual prowess for conquering the world to an extent of stupidity, because Dan DiDio probably told him to, in some Earth Prime universe, which does bring the question I'll bring up later. We see dozens of ships arrive flying through space, and the title showing up to be called Crisis. Yeah, I kind of knew that was going to happen. This is technically considered a crisis event because even though it doesn't have the name, it's called Doomsday Clock, which is the end times occurring. 
But yeah, we get these series of pages showing all the superheroes we've grown to love. Hawkman and Hawkgirl, Big Barda, uh, Mr. Miracle, jo Jon Stewart, Hal Jordan, Jessica, Cyborg, Donna Troy in her new Teen Titans year outfit for some reason. The Hair of Starfire, Barry Allen, the Green Arrow, Black Canary, M Martian Manhunter, Man Hunter, Aquaman and Mira. Okay, now this was what really threw me off the loop here. Okay, you already pushed it with Green Arrow, but Aquaman and Mira, how are they going to work in space? Like, uh, okay, I get Aquaman has super strength and everything. I I'm basing this off of the uh, Aquaman movie. But his prowess comes from the sea, and while there is water on Mars, I don't think there's enough to actually be considered an actual threat unless he can really rip them the ground. So, yeah, moving forward. We also get Supergirl, uh, the members of what I think I recall from Link Cars Futures End Review, where, it's, where there's this lady that was part of the Stormwatch crew, uh, John Steele. Uh, then we get the Justice League Dark characters like Zatanna, John Constantine, Swamp Thing, and the Dead Man. And we also get the Doom Patrol all coming together to combat this threat. And then we get a kind of a surprising twist. We also get Nightwing, played by Dick Grayson, age whatever. Because in the Nightwing stories, he's kind of, he got shot in the head and then he was in this identity thing where he was being someone else and someone else dressed up as him and clearly that's Dick Grayson so he's back in the Nightwing outfit so clearly Jeff Johns was like yeah here's a spoiler uh Batgirl's in her Batgirl outfit from New 52 and we also see Red Hood surprisingly and Red Hood is wearing his pre-Red Hood and the Outlaws issue 25 uh costume so something happened right Oh, we also see Katana and uh, Batwoman. We also see Shazam, Mary Marvel, and the Shazam family. And uh, I'm trying to remember her name. Uh, whatever. Uh, let's just say they're not going to make it very well. And then we see The Question and Blue Beetle, along with Captain Adam and some woman I don't know, asking this. How much longer? And The Question just goes ahead and asks, good question. Which does want me to see Warshak and the Question team up. Maybe they'll do that if they're still around after Doomsday Clock. If there is a DC Universe. Functioning, at least. So then Dr. Manhattan, while this is going on, is basically doing this. Narrating his perception of time. Five days and three hours ago, a destination on Earth creates a tacky fog, obscuring the immediate past and future. Looking at the present and the, its immediate surroundings has been trying to read through a kaleidoscope. What are you hoping to accomplish? No, that's not now. That's later. As the tycoon par tachyon particles finally begin to fade, I am able to probe into the past, following them to their source. Moscow. And Moscow is in complete and abject ruins. Way to go, Firestorm! Uh, Hawkman arrives, seeing Batman injured. Yeah, here's something I want to call BS on a little bit. So, when we last saw Batman, there were thousands, hundreds upon hundreds of glass shards for coming towards him. He does not have the amount of scars that he needs to have on his face. And by that, I mean mostly half of his face should be scarred by now. And his back should technically be broken because I don't think that's the surgery that can fix broken backs snapped in half yet. And so, then, while I do get this as the DC Universe, we were still mad over how Batwoman was, how uh, Batgirl, aka Barbara Gordon, was brought back from Oracle, even though everyone knows that disabling people and bringing them back to full capacity is like kind of uncomfortable because that doesn't really exist. Like, there are ways to walk around, but not. Like at crime fighting level mobility. So anyways, Hal Jordan arrives saying Firestorm must have made a hell of an explosion to pull himself apart like this. Because Ronnie Raymond and the Professor are split apart. And Superman, yeah, he's currently in a coma. And the press is like, Superman got what he deserved. I will not stand by and care for his compassion nature. Or how 
dare he go ahead and side with the enemy? He stood there and protected Firestorm. He showed us whose side he was on, and it's not ours. The march against metahumans culminated in front of the Justice League of America's headquarters here in Washington, D.C., where it's rumored Superman has taken refuge. Anti-Superman semantic con continues to grow as Superman has chosen not to respond to the allegations of collusion, fraud, and accessory to murder. AKA, yeah, why doesn't the Justice League just say, oh, Superman's in a coma? I really, like, okay. They had to realize that, right? Like, this is Superman, right? He made a bold declaration, and what do you mean has chosen not to respond? Couldn't you just say a liaison said this, a PR person, or anyone from the Justice League? What happens if you have that Superman made the choice? Like, this is Superman. What, what does he really have to fear from the public other than them being mad at him? Like, they can't beat him up. They can't kill him. Even the team, even the superhuman team in Russia was like, uh, it's Superman. I don't think we could take him on. We could probably stall him, but, like, beat him up? You're kidding, right? But anyways, we rushed to Lois Lane, rushing to him as he's currently trying to recover in his coma state. And the press is like, we can only guess as to why Superman refuses to talk to the press. Uh, because he's unconscious and in a coma, Lois Lane is distraught and is hugging Superman Clark Kansas' unconscious body. And then we go to the President of the United States, who convincingly is never shown in terms of his face. I can only imagine why. Yeah, I think you already know where this is going. We know who the president is, isn't it? It's the president, Donald Trump, isn't it? Because if you're going to bring in real-life elements such as Putin from Russia and the what happened in Syria, which I will not talk about, that's Donald Trump. That is Donald Trump for certain. Especially what they say later on. So the... So the cabinet is like basically saying, you gotta condemn Superman's actions, you can't address, you can't wait to address this anymore. And, yeah. And the president, aka Donald Trump, is trying to be reasonable. <laughs> okay, 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 let me, let me try and be serious for a moment. Donald Trump is trying to be... Okay, yeah, I'm trying a hard time to say this. I'll just say Mr. President. Mr. President is saying that if he does this, he'll be risking a bit of risk of foreign attack because their biggest deterrent against foreign powers is all he's got is Superman. And they say basically say, this is a huge thing you're asking me for. Huge. And the, pre and the lady was like, he's a liability now, Mr. President. You stand by Superman today, you lose with the White House. The, you lose the White House tomorrow. And, and basically, the president's like, I should throw this failure to the wolves. Too arrogant and very dumb. Yeah, everyone's very arrogant and dumb. Except for me, the president of the United States of America. I know everything. And the press and the cabinet member is saying, I would advise against that. No one wants to go to prison. Yes, yeah, so which means we need to risk World War Meta in order to save our own hides while we explode in nuclear radiation metahuman powers. Also, this is mirroring a certain element of Watchmen. Remember, when when what Dr. Manhattan was around, nuclear war, while it was closing in, it was always being held back because Dr. Manhattan was aligned with the United States. Via passive-aggressively. But because Dr. Manhattan left or disappeared and went to Mars for a while and hung out there, Russia struck and attacked attacked uh, Afghanistan, causing tensions to rise and everyone to be pissed off at each other. So basically, Superman is the Dr. Manhattan of Earth right now, and now they just rip, and now they just blew it big time. And Donald Trump is basically saying, like, okay, we need to go ahead and expose ourselves, Mr. President. Although you have no reasons to do so, we do not feel like going to prison. So we need to save our own high while we rent the world burn. 
Meanwhile, riots and looters are going ahead, and basically the cabinet is... It basically does the obvious. Basically, does the cabinet does what I would have suspected the real world to probably do. Stroke Trump's ego by saying this. You need to show the American people you're their savior now. You're the person who can no longer wear the mask. You're the hero now. You're bare the Superman. I'm bare the Superman. I like it. Meanwhile, we see Reggie going ahead and moping around, wearing a sign over him saying, you see what you want to see, and moping about the fact that his entire life has been fucked up in the head. And then we cut to someone from the press saying, they must reveal themselves and their true loyalties to the world. Russia demands it. So basically, they're doing what Watchmen did, where they introduced a law where they go ahead and force the costume vigilantes to expose themselves or turn themselves over. Meanwhile, we get Lex Luthor brooding as he re re watches the media and say about how reports of mass exodus of American metahumans hundreds were seen gathering around several ships outside of Washington, D.C. last night. And then we get the confirmation that this is indeed Donald Trump when it says, The president also tweeted, The U.S. cannot, cannot support Superman any longer. I've done more for the world anyway and will continue to. Do you need any more proof that this is Donald Trump? That is something I can imagine what, what they what he would say. Like, seriously, I've done more than the man of freaking steel. The man of freaking steel. Huh, he has nothing on me. I've been in office for, what, three years of my four-year tenure? And I've already caused enough problems with the American division currently going on in the world. Except for that one creepy challenge of harm and mass chaos. I have nothing to do with that, and I am freaking disturbed by that. So anyways, uh, Wonder Woman is, is revealed to have been returning. Um, yeah, she's set to return and is revealing a comprehensive plan to help basically stop the world from going to hell. And the Justice League had disappeared, and her reappearance is just coincidental. Meanwhile, Alfred is attending to Bruce, and yeah, like, remember how I said there was tons and tons and tons of shards coming t as Batman when the when everything broke? Yeah, um, yeah, he doesn't have all those scars that you would suspect. So yeah, he Alfred assures him that Clark Kent's all right, but Firestorm, yeah, that's a different matter. You see, Firestorm. A.K. Ronnie Raymond and the Professor, yeah, they're trying to wonder what the hell happened, and basically they reveal that, yeah, someone that someone else played them into doing this, and then it's revealed that, oh, we're not on the we're not in the Justice League headquarters, we're in space. So yeah, Batman just wonders why would they all leave the planet? Meanwhile, Green Arrow just says, yeah, you could quote me. No, you are, no, you. Barking prudent pundits on what Superman's piss. Hell, you aren't worth mine. That's the Justice and League way. The League sent the very best, and Alfred explains that the League sent the very best to analyze and contain any environmental damage and from Firestorm's detonation. The Green Lantern, the Green Lanterns, the Atom, even John Constantine volunteered. And they discovered it wasn't Firestorm who caused the explosion. It was someone else. Someone they believed was trying to kill Superman. It was an energy they'd never encountered. And they traced it to Mars. Batman says, Bruce Wayne says this. They're being played. Played? Excuse me, sir. I believe your last words to Superman before the explosion were, It isn't Firestorm. Or, Firestorm wasn't ex behind the explosion. But I know if the man they were going after was there either. After was either. I should have listened. I did see it. I should have seen that the god of rock and roll is innocent in everything. My life is a lie. My life is a lie! <laughs> so, yeah. Then Batman said, ask the computer, computer, how long before... For a message to reach Mars. 13 minutes and 55 seconds. Thus the Green Lanterns arrive. Coming out of the field and then they see the checkerboard floor that Dr. Manhattan had cut off from the Joker's playhouse. 
And yeah, this is what Guy Garner says. We would have been faster if we came ourselves instead of dragging all these folks with us. Ah, Guy Gardner. Still being a pissed off, I'm a, I'm a man attitude he's trying to display. Meanwhile, Hal Jordan goes ahead and bees the voice of reason, albeit not knowing the full extent of the problem. We don't know who or what we're up against, Guy. And Guy Yarner just counts with, well, we know one thing about them besides his, besides his not been a fan of Spaman. What's that? Hal Jordan says. He likes checkers. And Jessica just says, why do you assume it's a he? And Guy just gets annoyed by saying, shit, not this again, new girl. And hey, I say the villain is a woman, and you'll get mad for that. And then Jessica discovers the old photograph of Dr. Manhattan before he actually became Dr. Manhattan with his previous love interest, who he inadvertently gave cancer to, and then cheated on her with Silk Spectre, and then who left her for basically going crazy. And then she went ahead and dated Night Owl, and she didn't come with them, so she'll probably dead by this point. They wonder what the he- who the hell is that. However, they don't answer that question because that would have taken too long, and they wouldn't know. And Hal Jordan says, "Everyone, our rings have located a structure of some kind up ahead. His base of anything or hers, cram it, Gardner." Well, you proved his point. If he had said it was a woman, then everyone would have been offended. Political correctness is seriously messed up. So Professor goes ahead and rants, say, You brought us along without consent, Tornado. Yeah, I was unconscious the whole time, and then I didn't even know we were being transported, and now we're looking into what happened. Professor, please understand. I understand perfectly fine. We're essentially been shanghaied by the Justice League. Um... Aren't you part of the Justice League? I'm really confused right now. And they just try to explain that, yeah, someone who set you up and puts them in a coma, yeah, they're on Mars. Meanwhile, the Greenlanders are talking. The ring isn't picking up any fingerprints, but its energy source matches the explosion in Moscow. Batman and Alfred are talking to the computer, asking the message will be received in 12 minutes and 4 seconds. And then Guy Gardner just points out the obvious and say... Kind of creepy, isn't it? It's so still. And pretty. You're really calling Dr. Manhattan's Fortress of Solitude pretty? Meanwhile, Lois Lane is, is currently distraught over this whole Superman being in a coma thing. And then we get an unsuspecting guess. Hello, Lois. This is I, Lex Luthor. Did you get the drive I sent you? Yeah, when I read this, I was like, oh, so Lex Luthor was the one that sent the drive. Well played, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. Well played. I thought Warshak said it, and that would have created a myriad of plot holes. But now this is like, how did he get that footage? Seriously asking. Like, Lex Luthor makes it less complicated, but still asking where he got that footage. Lois Lane assumes the obvious and vows to not let... Let Lex Luthor hurt her, hurt her husband over her dead body. And we all know what happens if Lex Luthor does indeed kill her. It's going to lead to injustice, and then the Man of Steel is going to go crazy and kill Lex Luthor. And then jo- Jonathan Ken and Connor Ken are going to have to come back and do some crazy mission to stop him. Only to be punched in the ribs so hard they'll die, and then they'll be sent to the Phantom Zone to recover. But never be allowed to leave. Oh, wait, that was the Injustice universe, and Jonathan Kent doesn't exist. So, yeah, uh, Lex Luthor assures her, I have no intention of harming Superman at the moment. And Lois, for good reason, said, and then we get, I don't believe this. And the professor is talking, saying, we should be flying home to turn ourselves in for what happened in Moscow, Ronald. Not marching across Mars to fight some battle." And Red Tornado tries to be reasonable by saying, The Justice League believes whatever happened in Russia, including the civilian deaths, may not have been your fault, Professor Stein. In fact, we think the villain we're tracking was behind it all in an effort to discredit Superman. And Ronnie says, And us, we gotta do something! We should do something! Should we do something? 
do something. We should do something. Should we do something? We should do something. Ronald, don't. However, Firestorm returns, saying that the that they need Firestorm. The Green Lanterns construct a field around Mars, linked to um, Ronnie Raymond to unleash the powers of of the Fire Matrix to go ahead and make a breathable air for all the other heroes. Because for some reason, the Professor does not want to help for some reason. And one of the heroes, after coming out, say, Wow! Mars! And Barry Allen... Yeah, I gotta be honest, he was possibly the most disappointing thing in the comic. I, I, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Barry Allen says, Don't get distracted, Robbie. And Robbie just says, I've never even been out of the country before. Batman goes in and talks to the computer again, saying message will be received in 11 minutes and 5 seconds. And then the question goes ahead and says, The Superman theory isn't a conspiracy. It's a fact. And Batgirl is like, No one wants to hear it right now, Question. And Question just says, No one ever does. And then as the heroes march into the dome, uh, head to confront this great threat, uh, Dr. Manhattan and talks to himself. The tachyon are still clouding my perception. What is going to happen in the immediate future is unclear, but I see how this ends. And then we see, oh, the elongated man. Yeah, in this universe, uh, the whole events that happened with Identity Crisis did not happen, so Ralph Dibney is still alive, and, you know, his wife's not murdered viciously. And Jean's still alive and married to uh, the Adam still. So yeah, I'll give them points for that. John says, says this. We make initial contact, Ralph. We see what he wants. I want to kill Superman. Okay. What else? As such, John makes the introductions. Hello, my name is John Johns. Hans, who are you? Where do you come from? What are you doing on Mars? And one of the, and Freddy just brings up gross. That dude's naked. He's hanging in the wind. That's enough, Freddy. Darla, cover your eyes. And Doctor Manhattan just basically ignores them by saying this: they're protesting a power they fear. And Martian Manhattan is like, I don't understand. And Doctor Manhattan just says, Excuse me, I was talking to Ronald Raymond six minutes from now. The tachyons are mudding things up. You're looking for answers you don't know the questions to. And Guy Garner says, Shocker! The guy's a lunatic. And everyone was like, Oh, shut up! He didn't even say anything that you can't understand. Just because he can see through time and do a whole bunch of things doesn't necessarily mean he's a lunatic. So Guy Gardner decides to be an idiot and talk about the past and the glory days. Hey, Blue Man Groupie, before you launch into why you're messing with Superman, let me tell you about his friends. We're the biggest group of badasses this side of the Milky Way. We've made the rule of apocalypse blink the shit off our boots, shoved the universe eater back into the sewer like we crawled out of. We've been armies of evil rain, eh, slingers looking to enslave us, burned up Batman from alternate realities trying to torture us and spank super brats out to destroy us. Yeah, that's legitimately what he said. Meanwhile, he shows a construct of various people throughout his, throughout the Justice League's history. Darkseid, the Anti-Monitor. They don't know about the Crisis on Infinite Earths event, so clearly that's not clearly what they did. Yeah, here's the thing that I found out when I was doing my research for the last several months on the DC Comics just to try and understand what the hell is going on with when the New 52 happened. Here's the thing. A lot of the stuff Jeff Johns wrote for Green Lantern when he took over the run, yeah, here's the thing. A lot of that stuff was maintained. Which means that while the reboot wasn't really a reboot in an altered timeline, Jeff Johns was like, okay, we'll reboot the universe, but can I keep the stuff I wrote? I kind of have a little bit of an ego, and I am the chief creative officer, so I really don't have to hear you, Dan Didio, so can I just keep the stuff and you can get rid of everything else? Yeah, so, yeah, I 
am questioning why the anti monitor is here. Like, I get that he was in Sinestro Core War and in Blackest Night as a Black Lantern for like a temporal time, but where did this version happen? And then we see other people pop up, like uh, Sinestro, uh, Doomsday, and then we get Superboy Prime. Wait a second. Yeah, here's the thing about Superboy Prime that I kind of wanted to know. You see, Dr. Manhattan, after John tries to calm the situation and tells him that, and informs everyone that Dr. Manhattan is confused, Dr. Manhattan just says, only for the moment. In five seconds, you will broadcast to everyone that the thought you read most clearly. My final vision of Superman. And he's looking at Superboy Prime, which leads to this question. So, in Justice League, I think they said this in No Justice, and in Just in Justice League Odyssey, the source wall has been destroyed. And last time we saw Superboy Prime... He was trapped in the source wall in Teen Titans to modern time, in the modern Teen Titans where Superboy Connor Ken and Wonder Girl trapped by him in the source wall in the 100th issue. And if the source wall is destroyed, and this is the DC Universe, it's just a heavily altered timeline by Dr. Manhattan, does that mean Superboy Prime broke out because of the destruction of the source wall? Or is he erased from history? Because if so, they clearly mention that he exists. So they probably don't even know what they're talking about. And yeah, he's yeah. So where's Superboy Prime? Like, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he pops up in Doomsday Clocks out of nowhere. So Supergirl screams out, "You think he's going to destroy you? So you're going to have to destroy him first? And all of us with him, Firestorm proclaims. You all saw what John did, right? Hey, this freak thinks it's the end of the universe. And Guy Garner just screams out, Shit, that's enough for me. Talk is over. Let's put some some underwear on this guy. hi And punches Dr. Manhattan so hard he breaks his neck. And uh, Troy is seemingly pissed off along with Barry Allen. And Guy just says, wait. Is that it? God, I didn't mean to kill him outright, but he had it coming. <laughs> I'm casually breaking everything the Justice League stands for. Only for Dr. Manhattan to disappear, so he's not dead. And Guy Garner just points out the freaking obvious, saying, Where did he go? And then it turns out that right in front of him, Dr. Manhattan appears saying this, That ring. I'm curious. What's inside it? He then proceeds to take the ring from Guy Gardner, much to everyone's horror and shock, and then does a little bit of analysis on it. I must admit, not knowing what is and what and, and was and will be, it's enjoyable. And this energy, emotion consolidated and manufactured into the power by the ring, I find it difficult to affect. And he ultimately destroys the ring, Guy Gardner's ring, which means he has nothing left for him. And Constantine brings up, if he ain't sus the pow if he ain't sus the power rings, he's gonna have a fucking hard time with what we've got. Z! Zatanna acted, plans her magic. Uh, I forgot his name, but he was in the Justice League Unlimited series. Uh, does fire hellfire burns worst z unleashes her magic and then dr manhattan aka jeff johns retcon style saying this you believe you all believe you're wielding magic i must perform a deeper analysis but i see this power your you heart you harness is in reality the scraps of creation like the random errors in computer code discarded and forgotten left to be picked up and used by those who are also find themselves discarded and forgotten magic yeah he formed yeah so basically retcon style 101 here and again and when he says discarded and forgotten we see it we see the frontal image is the dead man then dr manhattan twists the energy around barry allen martian manhunter aquaman and hawk girl charge 
And Dr. Manhattan just says, it feels good to still learn. And basically blows everyone away. Then we cut back to Lex Luthor saying, I've come in peace. Although I have attempted to murder you, your husband, your family, and bring harm and try to destroy your marriage somehow because my, Brian Michael Bendis is under the orders of, orders of Dan DiDio to make the relationship toxic, even though that's clearly not working to the fans and not really working at all with Jack Johns, I am sadly going to have to work with you and uh, save your lives. And Lois the sir, doesn't believe him and say, You dedicated your life to destroy Superman Lex, but now today, now, while well, the world turns against him and he lies in a coma, you've come to help him? And Lex Luthor just says, That may be an overstatement. I'm here to help you, Lois, with the story of your life. And Lois just screams out, Why would I believe a thing you say? And Lex Luthor admits, okay, yes, it's true. I admit, I'm excited to see Superman taking down a pig or two, and I understand your caution when it comes to me. He then presents her a gun and says, but please, hear me out. He gives her the gun and take it, if it makes you feel better. The safety's on, but, and then Lois says, I know how to take it, take it off. Beautiful and strong. Yes, my weird flirting after I have attempted to kill you will clearly help in my attempts to woo you. And Lois snarls at him, triggering the gun, saying, Save the comments and don't take us closer to Superman. And Lex Luthor says, I was the one who sent you the footage of the heroes that never were. It's proof, Lois. Proof of what, Lex? That there's a force out there undermining not only Superman, but all of creation. My evidence points to one of his victims. Have you ever heard of Wally West? Yeah, here's the thing I found out. Apparently there was a storyline when I got confused because why doesn't Lois Lane know about the Justice Society if she's from the pre New 52 era with Superman, who should also know this. Yeah, it turns out there's a bit of a complication there. You see, there was a storyline in Superman where basically, I think it was Superman who were born or the Oz Effect, where Superman is pre New 52 and post and post Flashpoint versions mixed together to merge the timelines or something and this was basically Superman with a mix of the po of the pre new 52 version and the post new 52 version which is why it took forever to get his trunks back on but yeah and now Lex Luthor is suggesting that Wally West will finally show up in this story and I was like yes also uh Dr. Manhattan is kicking everybody's asses Batman goes ahead and is talking with, is discussing with Alfred. Alfred says, sir, I trust you aren't thinking of going to Mars. Batman just doesn't listen. And while Starfire is battling Dr. Manhattan, the news is talking about the sun is shining bright this morning as the United Nations gather together to hear out Wonder Woman, who's expected to present a comprehensive plan of peace in hopes of defusing the escalating metahuman arms race. During the bat, we got back to the battle where Ronnie Raymond is, a t is a prepared to fight Dr. Manhattan, saying that they don't know who they're dealing with, while Dr. Manhattan goes ahead and gives him a piece of his power, where he says, No, Ronald, you don't. Where it's revealed that Ronnie Raymond is basically been sent back through time through his perception ability, through Dr. Manhattan's ability to perceive time, where he discover where Dr. Manhattan is narrating everything, where he says... You are 7 years, 46 days, 30, 20 minutes, and 10 seconds ago outside. They're protesting a power they fear. In less than 2 hours, the facility will explode and you and the Professor Martin Stein will be fused into a single organism. One of the most powerful men of humans I've encountered on this earth. And laid bare one of the most deadly. Ronnie Raymond then says, Where is the Professor? Dr. Manhattan just casually points over there and, and Ronnie Raymond hears something. It's almost time. Of course I realize the risks involved, but... And Ronnie Raymond says, Professor? And then it turns out the shocking truth. In the biggest twist so far, Doomsday Clock. Yes. As you read in my latest report, I believe the more powerful the accident, the more powerful and the end, res the end result... If you take the origins of the others into consideration and apply the same, 
I know how much trouble some of them have caused. That's why my search for this one was ex exhaustive. Exhaustive. His mother died years ago, and his relationship with his father is strained. He's in a desperate need of parental guidance and figure. Yet in some ways, he reminds me of my son, my own son. I have groomed him well. He and I shall become one. What better way to learn more about these metahumans than from the inside? Ronnie Raymond now learns the truth. Martin Stein never cared about him. He always saw him as a metahuman test subject, much to Ronnie Raymond's shock and horror, and he's denying, and he's believing he's denying everything. <coughs> <coughs> Ryan Raymond is screaming, saying, No! Why would you show me that, Professor? Why would he? And Dr. Manhattan channels his inner Dan DiDio to say this. To simply prove my point. Even hope decays. And Ronnie Raymond charges a fire blast towards Dr. Manhattan, injuring him when he just says, Interesting. And Black Canary and Green Arrow, and Green Arrow points out the freaking obvious when he screams out, he, Hey, you see that? Not as invulnerable as he looks. And the heroes target together where Dr. Manhattan just says, Interesting. Very interesting. Big barter attacks, there's a huge thing landing on them. All the heroes are using their powers against this force. And Doctor and Captain Am arrives and basically Captain Am vows this. Forget Superman! Captain Man is the last thing you'll ever see. Doctor Manhattan supposedly explodes, killing everybody in the process killing himself in the process, and the photo has been destroyed or buried in the Martian sand. And we cut to the United Nations. Wonder Woman arrives and announces today is the day we can begin to heal. Our world has been under assault by mistruths, fear, and extremism. While this is going on, Ozymandias is talking. Ozymandias is watching everything. And then he clicks a button on his laptop while Wonder Woman speaks. There is no singular villain behind it. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, the kind of is. It's your governments. We've all played a role. Message failed to send. Much to Batman's anger. And Barry Allen says, Everything's going to be okay, Hal. You alright? Hal just says, Just another day at the office. Green Arrow says, Hey, way to go, Ronnie. Crack that egg right open. Ronnie says, I don't believe him, Professor. But And then one of the heroes speaks up saying, uh, Guys? And we see Dr. Manhattan, right in front of the heroes to their horror, is reforming. I... Uh, I, I, what are you hoping to accomplish? And much to everyone's horror, Dr. Manhattan releases a volatile energy, blasting everyone into oblivion. Meanwhile, at the United Nations, Diana and the UN are interrupted by a strange attack, with the voice calling out to Diana. I hope I'm not interrupting Diana. Wonder Woman demands what he's doing here, and it turns out it was Black Adam and his Giganta and the Creeper. Attacking United Nations, saying that, proclaiming this. I heard your friends were on vacation. What am I doing? I'm making a move. All the while, Dr. Manhattan stands on Mars over the fallen heroes who have fallen before him. Wherever there's a, there's a human being, there is an opportunity for a crisis. Yep. And then we cut to uh, those government files of the Department of Metahuman Affairs. And then it turns out that it turns out that the Department of Metahuman Affairs was created by none other than the director of it, Professor Martin Stein, revealing that he's basically the cause of all of this. So that was Deuce O'Clock issue number nine. Phenomenal! And, we're, and I was glad this finally came out. But there is a question regarding Barry Allen. You see, with Wally West disappeared and no idea where he's at right now since his future might be coming back later on in Doomsday Clock or he might just get mentioned a lot. I was hoping Barry Allen, when they were tracing the energy, they w like Barry Allen would say, wait, I've seen this blue globe before. It It's the one... It's the one that took that kept popping up when me and Batman were investigating the button. You don't think these are connected, are you? And if Dr. Manhattan and Barry Allen had a confrontation where Dr. Manhattan revealed that, yeah, I did it. 
this would cause, you know, like Donna Troy and and, and Nightwing and, and, and Barry Allen to let out a rage of emotion, realizing that this is the guy that's respond like, no, 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 asshole, I'm not going to listen to you. You're the reason Wally West is like the way he is now. You're the reason for all the misery you've caused to this world. And they attack him only to get blasted back by Dr. Manhattan. Like, I was hoping for that emotional cathartic moment where Barry Allen, Nightwing, and Donald Troy realizing that this is the son of a bitch that ruined Wally West's life, ruined his marriage, took his children away from him, drove him to likely be insane and go on a murder spree in the, crisis, in the sanctuary facility if he's indeed the culprit. And probably the reason why he's in Suicide Squad now, if the rumored ending it, that came out recently is the, is the cause. So I was really hoping for some moment, emotional moment coming out of them. Like, yeah, I would have spoiled Heroes in Crisis, but really this takes place months after Heroes in Crisis. So clearly doesn't matter. Like everyone kind of already knows where Heroes in Crisis might be going unless they want to do a twist that completely derails everything. Like you did with Armageddon 2000. But yeah, this is we're now heading into the climactic ending to the series. We're, we're finished with issue 9, we're heading into issue 10 that's coming out next month due to all these delays. And now we finally get issue 10 probably coming out in, in the next month. Unless a delay happens, hopefully not, but still. Uh, then we get issue 11 and 12 coming, so three issues remain. The epic finale is approaching. The secrets behind DC Rebirth, the New 52, the future of the Justice Society, the Legion of Superheroes. Which also leads to this question, um, if the Legion of Superheroes doesn't exist according to Dr. Manhattan, does that mean Saturn Girl's dead by now? Or she's been erased? Because that means she shouldn't technically be existing right now. Yeah, I don't get it either. She might, she has, we haven't seen her or Johnny Thunder after they got kicked in the face and punched by Ozymandias. I don't even know where they are. We haven't seen them yet. So, yeah. This is looking like it's building up to the epic finale that everyone's hoping for. We're hoping for a great resolution to this. The restoration of hope and prosperity to the DC Universe. Which may be the biggest altering of time as we know it. Since Infinite Crisis, most likely, but still. And which was before Infinite... Before Zero Hour and Crisis on Infinite Earths. Will it lead to the return of the loss of the Legion of Superheroes? The return of the Justice Society? The return of Infinite Multiverse? Because the whole dark multiverse excuse is just making an excuse to expand it? Instead of just saying, let's bring back Infinite Herbs? Who knows? We will see in the next three issues. But until then, this was Neo Reality Entertainment. If you feel like, comment, subscribe, and donate. And stay tuned for more. And yes, I just now realized how formal I just sounded. <laughs> See ya.